Hello and welcome to another presentation of In The Money Media and Racelands PTF and power user of Racelands, Matt Vag Volgi here with you. We've got a very special offer for viewers. We're going to put that up at the end of the show, a way to save hundreds of dollars while accessing the awesome Racelands database. And on this show, we're going to talk about something really cool that it's almost hard to understand if you're looking at it for the first time. So we're going to give you a little bit of a, of a view in, but these are the next level stats. These are things that we're not used to looking at, not traditional horse racing stats. And whereas a lot of the times we come on these shows and we talk about studying form and horses and things where a completely new person coming in, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it would take years to come to the understanding that died in the wool horse players like us and like the people you typically see on the network have. It's just, we've got all this entrenched knowledge. When it comes to these next level stats, you could be ahead of us in a week or, or three days if you spent the time diving in and looking at it. Matt Van do you think that's an accurate statement? This would be a real area that somebody could become an expert in a very short amount of time because it's also new. Yeah, for sure. But again, I, I think it's, it's, you know, I call it one of those like new frontier type type situations in, in horse racing. And to me, that's right up my alley. Um, but again, I think it offers another pathway, a new line of statistics that's not really widely used. So, I mean, really that in any kind of advantage gambling, you're looking for proprietary information. You're looking for stuff that you're doing on your own or stuff like this that maybe folks have just ignored, right? Or haven't really gotten into because it really hasn't been, an out, been out there that much. So I think that's where the real value is. The value in the unknown, Pete, is where I see. Uh, yeah. But I do think there's some some there there. And uh, we we got a couple, couple different stats to walk through that I think will give you an idea of different ways that you can utilize this. Matt Miller, BCBC champion, who's working on a book that I'm having the pleasure of helping him with called A Better Way of Thinking, not out yet, but it will be soon, calls things like this unclaimed spaces. And he talks about gambling. When you can find an unclaimed space, something that other people aren't doing, that's where you can find the edge. This is one of those things. Before we get into the specifics, Matt, just the quickest overview of what type of stats these next level stats are that you can find in the Racelands database. Yeah, so it's basically taking from like a let's call it like a speed and pace figure, but then kind of breaking it down into these kind of what I call like micro statistics, where you're looking at horses from a stance of miles per hour, you're looking at it from strides per second, you're looking at it in terms of cumulative strides, and then think about taking some of those like like very unique statistics and then adding that into everything else you have, right? So adding it down on top of that. And then what you have as part of the race lens past performances is you can click on GPS on the top of the screen and it'll give you all of the statistics related to these. Uh, and it'll break it down by each quarter of the of races this horse has run. You're able to look at it not only from a total standpoint, but also broken down every quarter of what these statistics look like. So I, I, I think it's 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 very interesting. It's a very different way to look at the game. Uh, again, kind of looking at it from a, a speed and pace style, but looking at it in, in a different way on the, on the stride length and, and looking at it from um, from a miles per hour standpoint. Let's, yeah, it's interesting. And it's interesting they use miles per hour. You know, in the old pace methodology, they always talked feet per second, but I imagine it's the same information just presented in a different way. Does that sound right? And uh, That's go correct. ahead yeah. and yeah. Uh, lead us in to this first uh, dirt sprint top speed miles per hour stat and, and, and what it told you. Yeah. So what this is showing, you can do this in different ways. You, you can do this in terms of the horse's top metric, or you can do it relative to the field. So there's actually two different options or multiple different options you can select. This is showing, you know, the uh, dirt sprints with a horse that has in the race, the top, top average miles per hour for that horse. And again, we've done a lot of back testing on this over the last year, over 19,000 races. What's telling me there's some there, there is there's the 27, 22% win percentage and the negative 21% ROI, right? It's telling me there's something in there. If you start to dig a little bit deeper, I think you'll start to find some interesting statistics. I think one of them that kind of starts in that direction is, is the stat below it, right? Going specifically, you know, instead of just dirt sprints, let's look at on the dirt going seven furlongs. I use seven furlongs because it's just a different, it's a different sprint, right? It's, it's in the bucket of sprints, but to me, it's a, it's a totally different race in my opinion, right? So 
in terms of just the sustained type of run style, the not getting a break, I think this miles per hour average may have some 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 inkling to that. And I think it does here, right? I mean, it, so this is seven furlongs, top miles per hour in the race, but also added in the best late pace, right? So can I get a horse that does have that top figure, but also has the best close? And again, over 3,000 starts, when you're hitting at 37%, 77% of those horses have hit the board and a negative 16% ROI to me. Now I'm very interested, right? So again, the question I get, the basic question I get a lot is like, how do you use statistics in your overall horse play? This is part of it, right? This is something that gets me excited enough to say, okay, this is, I'm going to start paying attention to this. I think that's a huge stat across the board. And again, going back to what I've said a lot is very broad statistic that kind of gives you an idea, but then you start to whittle it down a bit and you start to get focused. I think it starts to, to really help in your overall vision of how a race may play out. You'll never find a better example of sort of what you might call that widest reaching, almost generic stat that then can lead to something that's, that's got real gold. But even at the high level here with this dirt sprint stat, Compare it to another video we did recently when we were looking at um, just the best speed figure last out. That was 16% win and minus 27% ROI, if I'm remembering those numbers right. So just by going to miles per hour rather than speed figure, you're, you're improving very significantly in both categories, even though that's not enough signal to make a, a bet off of. That's just enough signal to say, hey, dig deeper, I would say. But then, boom, I think you've got it here. Uh, based on this, you could have now race lens notify you any time there was a top miles per hour horse in last race with the best LP going seven furlongs, and then you, you it sort of auto selects those races for you, and then you start your handicapping from there. And again, you've only got to overcome, uh, you know, a, a minus sixteen percent uh, takeout. Essentially, it gives you a head start, and, it, and these are horses that I would imagine you can really build around in multis, build around in in, in verticals, and potentially be key horses for your whole day. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's just, it's stats that really aren't widely used at this point. Right. So I think that's where the, the real advantage is. That's why, again, another one of my, my projects, as I, I believe I mentioned the last time of, you know, digging in more of the, the, to, to workouts, right. There's such a, a, a vast opportunity there with race lens, but this being new and so much there, it's certainly something I want to dive a lot more into. And this makes me want to do it when I see just some of these general ideas of running this, tells me that this is a place I certainly want to live. I think it'll give you a nice advantage that a lot of folks aren't looking at. Quick little tangent, because I meant to say this in the last video when you were talking about that workout info that you can find in Racelands. I remember reading in Barry Meadows' latest book, The Skeptical Handicapper, which is worth reading and seeking out for people out there. Tell him we sent you. But he ran all manner of stats with including the idea of a recent five furlong workout and Every stat improved significantly. I mean, maybe not literally every, but it was overwhelming how much that knowledge meant that on paper, you would think this is so obvious. Isn't the crowd going to notice this? What value could this have? Has a lot of value. That's the kind of thing that then you can use within the database of race lens to in conjunction with other angles and maybe turn a losing angle into a winning angle if it's coupled with a fast five for a long workout in the last seven days or however they parsed the query. Let's get on to our next and final slide, Matt, because this gets into some, some cool stuff. Stride length is a topic that's been written about a little bit by Simon Rollins in the UK. There's some good info out there about it. But I was very curious the way that you decided to go through this data. Talk us through what you found when it comes to turf routes and dirt, dirt sprints. Yeah, this is an area I certainly want to try to dive a bit more into because I think it's interesting. The, the, the top stat, again, I ran this just based on, and you've, again, another thing you've heard me say a lot is just thinking out loud of something that I think is logical, but let's see what the numbers say, right? I felt turf route, the longest average stride length you'd, you'd expect to me, you expect these horses to have, you know, a, a bit of an edge, right? Yeah. Especially going on, on with turf routes. It just makes sense. It's, I'm not, you know, it's, it's one oh one of, of, of kind of logical thought handicapping. The numbers don't say that. Right. And I found that to be very interesting. Again, a large sample of over 3000 races, 80%, not great. And a negative 32 in our so that kind of, hit me a little bit different to say, well, maybe it's just not, it's not that simple. It's not that straightforward. And maybe there's some different ways to, to look at that. But again, this is a way where you start to take that general thought, kind of our, our thesis, thesis from me, from the beginning, Pete, of 
the random guy tells you that you have to do this at the racetrack. You always have to bet this. Well, this is a great platform to test those theories and to see if they actually hold. And I think this could be an example of it, right? Of just something you would expect to be something different is not quite. And then the second one with the dirt sprint, just again, another example of going deeper and being more specific and seeing if you can pull some more information out that dirt sprint projected on the lead specifically in mating claiming races, right? So like we've talked in our, in our prior series, Pete, about the top speed figure in these mating claiming races, how important that is. And then I added in that top average stride length, right? So you'd expect maybe sprints not to be that important, but you know, again, you look at 735, 734 starts, 34% wins and a negative 12% ROI. Again, I know negative 12% ROI, you got to get over that negative ROI sometimes and kind of look at it relative to the win percentage and how you're going to use a type of horse like this. So to me, I think this gets specific. It tells me a lot. And I feel the top stat there with turf routes kind of tells me something uh, a bit different. It is really interesting. My off the cuff hypothesis, I would have thought longest average stride length was a, was a good thing. I don't know that much about this. I'd want to study more. But the, the hypothesis I would take from this is that maybe with turf routes, it's less about the length of the stride and more about the cadence of the stride. And, and I don't know if that's how measurable that is, but that idea of quickening turn of foot, you hear that turn all the time. The horse with the best turn of foot might not be the one who's out there, you know, loping along with the longest stride. Definitely worthy of few further research for sure. It also makes sense to me that, you know, maybe that stride length comes more into play with a horse that's got that early speed and can then just, you know, repeat and grind and, and, you know, do that again and again. Um, especially in a maiden claiming race, you know, lead horses that lead maiden claiming races. We always make the assumption that they have an advantage because a lot of times these horses are in maiden claiming races because they don't want to pass horses. So speed in general, just a, a real weapon there. As you can see, lots of cool stuff that you can dive into and learn more through the power of race lens. And we've got this deal. It's still going on. I'm not sure how long it's going to go on for. It's a limited time offer. Save $300 on the annual subscription and you'll get a $200 value in the Money Plus subscription. That's going to get you all our Derby and Breeders' Cup special coverage as well as extra podcasts every week pretty much and digest of the picks from all the shows. Lots of great information there in the money podcast.com slash race lens. That's the place to go to take advantage of this limited time offer. Once again, in the money podcast.com slash race lens, Matt, thank you so much. Thanks to our friends over at race lens as well. We're going to be back with more coverage of the triple crown prep races and the triple crown races themselves. You'll find us here on the, in the money media, YouTube channel, do us a favor and subscribe there. Uh, leave us a comment. If you want, let us know what, what you think about stride length. They share your wisdom with us, how you want to use this program, etc. We love to hear from you in the comments. So don't be shy until the next time. May you win all your photos. <laughs>